Hello, welcome to another edition of the Archery Shack Shop Talk. I'm Jeremy. I'm TJ. I'm Bobby. We have got the one and only Bobby with us. Y'all been talking about him, telling y'all he's going to be on. He's finally on. He's our newest addition to the Shack crew. He's been doing some strings, a lot of customer service stuff. If you call the shop, you, you're going to talk to him or TJ usually to start with. But um, I've known Bobby for 20 couple years. His uncle owned the store that me and TJ used to work at, Bucks and Bass, about 20 years ago, 15, whatever it was. But uh, we got to needing some more help, and Bobby was at, here at the right time. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, you've been bow hunting for a while. How long? Probably 25 years, 30 years. 20, 25 years. Bobby's um, – he – he has been known to trade a bow or two. <laughs> yeah. He'll keep a bow around about four days, trade it for something different. But uh, anyway, I'm glad we got Bobby here finally. And uh, y'all in the comments tell him, hey. And we are on podcast 67, 67 weeks of podcasting. We got some questions from y'all to answer, some I'm random su- stuff to talk about. I'm surprised they let us on here for 67 weeks. It's a wonder we're not banned. I know. Let's talk about post office delays. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> and bow overall bow delays because of the COVID. My Lord, we could order bows before this year and have them in two or three weeks at the max. Yeah. And now they're telling us two or three plus months. It's a yeah. mess. It's yeah. a mess. Have y'all ordered anything off Amazon or anything like that and had the post office lose it? Because I swear, twenty to thirty percent of our stuff either. It don't really get lost. It just goes missing for like a week or two. Yeah. And then people email and say, hey, it's gone. And I'll be like, I'm pro- I promise you, just give it a day or two. Sure enough, it'll show back up. Yeah. The bow, stuff. the bow companies need to offer Prime. <laughs> they, they do. That's what sucks. I didn't get used to like Amazon Prime. You get something in a day or two, and I think the rest of the world is too. And then you go to order, say, a bow, and they're mm. saying, oh, it'll be three months. And it's like, that's crazy. But. Well. And and I guess you can say in their defense, you know, they just, you know, a lot of companies just released their new bows. And so I, I'm just wondering if they don't have enough of them built up. Well, I know some of them are still trying to stagger their shifts so there's not so many people at the warehouse. And, yeah. And I guess that's safety first type stuff. But, man, I wish they would have just not released a new bow for I agree. a year. Mm-hmm. Keep everything or try to catch up from last year. Mm-hmm. You know, we had bows we ordered in like july never showed up we canceled them because new bows came out and yep. reordered newer stuff i mean it's it's crazy i yeah. seen a shop we well, you seen it on facebook saying that they had uh, uh some bows ordered and it had been 17 weeks yeah and they were still telling them it was going to be a while i mean yeah. man that's crazy that is crazy it is that is crazy it's christmas time almost merry christmas yep we got our tree up over there in the corner um, you have to look at a picture of it on Instagram or Facebook. It's fancy with deer antlers on top. But uh, we got a couple new more, a uh, couple prime bows in, the new ones. The new Nexus. They're pretty bad. Yep. They are. We got a lot of the bear bows in. More bear bows hopefully coming and crossbows. I wish they'd ship us some crossbows. That's what we need. Yeah. I don't remember when they came last year. I feel like it might have been early spring. If I remember right, I think we got like one crossbow in right before the first of the year. Then after that, I think it was like February, March when we started getting them in, I think. It's just hard to fathom it taking this long for these companies, even in a normal year, to ship stuff. Like, don't release it unless you got enough ready to go. That's just my opinion. I think it's everybody else's opinion from what I see on Facebook, too. Oh, yeah. It's poor customer service. Well, and it's not just one bow company. It's all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember... Um, making a big order I want with a you know a big bow manufacturer about five six years ago and we waited and waited and waited and I'm like good god where's these things at so I called them and they're like oh they're still on order we're just trying to get them I just I don't understand they I mean they can look at numbers from past years and be like this is probably what we need to have ready and they could even guess on the low end yeah but not just be like we're gonna send the dealers a little demo pack and then we're gonna tell them it's gonna be three months before they can get another one I mean that's crazy it is uh, Bill asked, how hard is it to change a draw length on an Infinite Edge Pro? It's not that hard unless 
one of the screws on the mod falls behind the limb. That's what always sucks. Yeah. Sometimes then, you can grab that cable and pull it, and it'll rotate that screw out enough, and sometimes you just got to press it. Yeah. So it's according to where that screw's sitting. But other than that, that's probably one of the easier ones. Now, you will have to look up their little draw mod chart, unless you already have it, to find out which, you know, because on that one, it's like, what, 1 through 10 or something I like that? I can't remember. I can't remember. I wish people would just put... 22, 23, 24, because yeah. everybody, some bows have letters, numbers, mm -hmm. backwards numbers, and it's like, why not just put 26, 27, 28, 29? I don't know. What is your favorite bow? We've been asked this before. People mm -hmm. said, if you could have kept a bow that you sold, or even if it's a current one, what is your favorite one, or what is one you would have kept? Me personally, I, I always go back to the Matthew Z7 Extreme. Yeah. It's a short axle to axle bow. I know a lot of people don't like that, but it's very forgiving with a long seven three eighths brace height. Um, in my, where I hunt is close quarters, so that short axle to axle is mm -hmm. just very convenient for yep. me. Yeah, that's a good bow. That's a real good bow. Mm -hmm. The, um, I don't know, it's fun, when we put out videos of older like switchbacks and switchback XTs and Q2s. There's a ton of people. Even that Jennings uh, Buckmaster video I did, people were like, man, I still got it. I love it. It's, oh, it's, Lord. People still love the oldies. Yep. Um, what is our favorite string silencer? I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but, um, I mean, you got a couple options. You got, like, old school cat whiskers, beaver balls, which nobody ever uses anymore no. except for traditional... And then you got stuff like wishbones and monkey tails and the old, you know the old limb savers. Yeah, the string leeches. Yeah, there you go. I couldn't think of the name of it. The only thing about the string leech is you got to press the bow and split the string. Yep. The wishbones and the monkey tails, you know, you can just, just whip them around and zip they go. Yeah. As far as ease of use, and they work fine. Mm -hmm. That's probably the way to go. I, don't, I mean, I don't mind an old cat whisker. I mean, I know they look like big old puffs on your string, but they yeah. work good. Yep. Yeah. But you don't see them near. We don't have anybody ever asked for them. Mm -mm. Not unless we do a, like you say, like an older, like a Q2 or, you know, somewhere in there. We, we may throw some on there just to. Yeah. And I'm looking at the screen over there. Bobby's really not this short. He's in a short <laughs> stool. Well, I need to get, we need three equal things because when we have people on here, I always feel like they're either way up above us or way down below us. I got another taller chair about this size coming. Okay. We just got to get a screw for it. All right. That'll be good. Do string colors affect string stretch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Um, the brighter colors have a lot more wax in them. The more wax is in them, the more they're going to stretch ultimately. Now, we try to burnish most of that wax out when we make them, but you cannot physically get it. Like, for example, as much wax out of a flow orange string versus like a natural string that don't have any wax in it. And you get that in the heat, and that wax heats up, and then those fibers compress a little bit, and it elongates the string. So, like, if you're super worried about it, average Joe would have never have a clue. Yeah. But, like, the nat the color natural is the natural color of that material with no uh, dye or wax in it. So, like, if you're worried about that, get a natural color. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, most of the time, black, most of the time red's not bad, brown. The, like, the flow yellow, the flow orange, the flow green, all those are, like, so waxy. And you can just look at them and say, man, this strand just looks way bigger, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I say, we burnish them and put them under all this tension for hours and all this stuff. But, um, you know, if you were, like, getting down to the nitty-gritty, the those bright colors probably do have a little more give than the, anything else. Yeah. And then you got Bloodline, which does not have wax. And we're still playing with, uh, we've had some people request it. And we've got, I think, about every color they make in the what they, the VEC 99. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be a, something different. You know, it, yeah. may, it may not stretch with colors. We'll see. Let me see what else we got here. Ray asks, what is our favorite current release we're using? Or I guess could use. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm torn because I've got a true ball thing that I kind of fall back on. 
and then but currently i'm running the b3 hawk and like i said it's a toss-up between them two for me the the true ball thing and that b3 hawk i run the true ball thing myself it's a great release uh i'm like you i've tried different ones and that's what i go back to every time what am i shooting a b3 uh uh king i think king, it is king that's it it's it's kind of like the little goose i shot the little goose for like since 90 whatever year it came out it was like 99 i still got the first one i bought um 98 99 i don't remember when it was but uh and then you know ultimately sort of the background the people that started scott that family started b3 after scott got bought out by the outdoor group and i kind of went with them and went to the b3 stuff and i really like it so mm -hmm definitely check out like any of the you know b3 even scott uh true ball all these could be you know they make good stuff yeah um your true you know your true fire i mean uh, when when i hear true fire i automatically think of that hardcore release that they make mm -hmm. everybody and their brother shoots a hardcore now true fire makes some el cheapo stuff well that's why i said the hardcore yeah but they their upper end stuff ain't too bad I mean, we got like spot hog releases that are good. Mm -hmm. Fletchers, and but, one you never hear of anymore, and they make some higher end stuff is Cobra. Yeah, the rep brought some yeah. Cobra stuff in like two years ago, and I was thinking, what's this Walmart junk? And I'm like, damn, this is some pretty good stuff. Yeah, and, uh, it's worth looking into. Uh, somebody said if I could. If I went kisser button or nose button, which one would you choose and why? The the drawback with a kisser button that we that I see in the shop, Bobby Bobby sees it, Jeremy sees it, is they come in there, they come in and they look like a squirrel's got a hold of it, gnawed all the way around it. They pushing on it hard, yeah. and biting it. Yeah, and it pretty much you it's know not, it's not licorice. No, uh -uh. not candy. But um, I would probably go nose button route because it's got little tiny spikes on it and so you and it touches the tip of your nose as a you know because 99 percent of people when they anchor they're touching the string with their nose anyway so that right there with those little spikes on it is going to keep you from putting too much pressure on that string yeah and so but it still helps you keep your same anchor point exactly the kisser button, like TJ, people just push on it too hard. Yeah. And at full draw, it, don't derail your buddy's bow, but when somebody's at full draw, just feel their string because there's no tension mm -hmm. on it. It don't take the slightest little bit of push, and it'll give you some left and right issues. So, yeah. yeah. I think the nose button may be the way to go, too. you got to be careful because that facial pressure mm -hmm. will get you some craziness. Let's see what else we got here. Any disadvantages to running super high or super low let off? The biggest thing with high let off, you know, high as you can get is 90%, is at longer ranges, your group is going to open up a little bit just because you don't have enough holding weight to kind of keep you honest. Who made that 99% let off bow years, a couple years ago? Oh, Lord. Ah, um, oh, crap. It was wild. It was. For a hunting situation, you probably want a little more let off. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, 90% is not bad because I kind of wish I'd kept my Evolve 35 to hunt with with a 90%. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as I'm old, I kind of like 80, 85%. I think that still keeps me honest in my form and everything. I know with 90%, in a hunting situation or average Joe, it's great. But I know me from shooting all the years and my tournament stuff, you know, I, I could tell my group size opened up at, you know, 40, 50 yards yeah, with, that, with that higher let off. I feel like Elite started the high let off thing because, like, you didn't hear a whole lot about it. And then when Elites got popular, what, 2013, 14, where, you know, and they got that. That yeah, does, does that, and That's, you can adjust that limb stop. Everybody started wanting it, and mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, yeah, like you said, I mean, and then low let off, it'll keep your form better. But that joker's ready to go. If it we're, is. If we're talking like sixty five or sixty or whatever. So. Yeah. And if you're drawing back on a big deer and 
he just won't give you the opportunity. That's where that high let off mm-hmm. really does benefit mm-hmm. you. Like. Yep. Agreed. And then, like, when the Evolve stuff came out, we did. I did videos, I think, on it a couple of years ago. But, you know, like, the less let off you have, the faster the bow goes. Because, like, if you watch slow motion, I know PSE put some videos out. But with that high let off, it was almost like when the release was pulled. The string would sit there. It, yeah, it's like it took it a minute to, to go. But with lower let off, it was more prone to take off. So I don't know. But it wasn't, it wasn't but a few feet per second when we tested. No. Nah. And, you know, as far as running your higher percent let off, if you haven't shot one at 80, 85, 90%, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because when you go to let down, yeah, it's not. And it don't, I wouldn't recommend pulling it back with your hand. Yeah, People no. People pull it back and it's so much let off, you'll twist that string and then. Yeah, but, I mean, so. you literally have to take, and it feels like you could, when you start easing up, you know, there's always that anticipation. You ease up, ease up, and then it kind of goes well 90 percent you can ease up ease up ease up and it's like oh crap something doesn't happen mm-hmm. feels like the string done broke yeah and or it feels like your bow's locked up at full draw and you literally had to kind of force it down so yeah. it takes a lot of getting used to even with a release people in here sometimes will be like is it gonna go and then it'll take off on yeah the um adam asked how much draw length can he add by twisting his cables? And he didn't say a bow, you know, and it's really according to the bow. Mm-hmm. Um, but on average, about a quarter inch uh, is is it. I mean, you might get three-eighths out of a few bows, but what you're doing ultimately is adding, it's going to add some poundage, it's going to lengthen the draw length, but you don't want to add so much poundage that you're going to risk splitting a limb or whatever. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah. You know, it's one of those, like, if somebody has, you know, they're just used to shooting a certain, like, a weird number. Like, let's say 29 and 5 8 inch draw or whatever. You know, you can tweak with those things and get it just perfect. But you're going to add a few pounds. Mm-hmm. So, it's just, and it's according to the bow. I mean, like, yeah. you got a bow with a five-piece system. It's going to be different versus a hybrid cam or binary or whatever. Yeah. Nose is itchy. Um, and you know the old school way of doing it was making what the cable shorter and the string longer mm -hmm. but with the technology that's in these bows now you really don't we hadn't got that request in a long time the long string one well and you can play with a loop length too you know what I mean like you you got a little bit finagle width with a loop yeah and kind of shorten or or lengthen it Mm -hmm. somebody asked what do we think about the glow peep we were talking about that other night on something, and uh, I think it was a live feed. Oh, uh, Stan the man said he wanted to go to a bigger peep because he couldn't see it. I it, thought we had some, but I don't see it over there. The glow peep is a just a regular peep from Radical Archery Designs that they lightly spray with like a glow in the dark paint. And I, I mean, I like them. I think they're they actually I forget who initially designed them because they were doing it on Fletcher peeps, and then. Uh, rad or whatever they bought the whole thing out Mm -hmm. i think they're cheaper because they were like 20 bucks i feel like they're a little cheaper now didn't somebody else out there have one years ago they did okay years ago but i can't remember who it was i can't either now what um was it true glow i don't remember I think true glow. I know, like, a long time ago, I dipped my peep. Well, I didn't dip it. I painted on the front of it some glow-in-the-dark stuff, but it was so bright, once it got pretty dark, you couldn't even see past the peep because it was shining. Yeah. These people's got it figured out because I guess they put it in, like, an air gun or something and just missed it barely. Yeah. So that's pretty – and we still got – the glow loop was popular, mm-hmm. the glow-in-the-dark loop material. But uh, anyway, what broadheads do you shoot, Bobby? I shoot the Magnus broadheads, the Magnus stingers, and I also shoot the Rage. So it's if I'm shooting 30 yards and under, I like my Magnus. And if I'm going to shoot a longer range, I like my my Rage broadheads. Good old Rage. Mm-hmm. A rage in the cage. The Rage. What, what release you say you shot? The True Ball Fang. True Ball, that's right. Mm-hmm. The Fang. I'm glad we only got about a month left and tournament season starts back up. Hopefully we can get to some stuff. Last year it was like we went in hot, 
went to one or two, and then COVID yeah. shut everything uh-huh. down. And then they had a few at the end of the real, real hot summer season, and we ended up being busy here and didn't go. But I feel like we got a lot of people ready to shoot. So yeah. that'll be fun. I just – and and y'all hear me say this all the time, but I hope they don't cancel the tack again this year. Yeah. Hopefully they don't cancel nothing. Yeah, I know. I hadn't seen – other than ASA, I hadn't seen really any schedules. Well, in our South Carolina – Archery Association, they got theirs out, but as far as like TAC or R100, I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't. I know TAC released uh, the date for the Texas shoot, but it's not, the registration is not open. Gotcha. So, and they got the Southeast on there, so I guess they're coming back. Hmm. That'd be good. That thing, it's, it's a shoot like no other. Mm hmm on the side of a mountain of a thing well, that's what you were saying you got a little landline that attaches you to keep you from falling off we the did. mountain we did on that one it was it was straight rock mountain yeah one, and they had a, a line and i mean we were like good lord and old sea otter <laughs> we we all made it barely with our fat selves and then yeah. we were like where is the sea otter which we got to get him on the podcast oh lord and uh it was like 20 minutes later we heard him <laughs> <laughs> we were like oh god he's alive yeah i mean and it's and it's not, you know, like a little five foot fall off the side. You know, it's not oh, a little you'd, hill. You'd be hurt if you fell. I mean, this is what a fifty foot drop easy. Yeah. And I mean, it ain't. It wasn't for the faint of heart. I put it to you that way. But the coolest shot, in my opinion, there was the white mountain goat. And I mean, we shot like this straight down down to a waterfall. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, but probably, what, 30 yards? I think it was 22 yards. And uh, But this huge waterfall right behind it, spray. I mean, it was it was neat. And even the video I took of it, don't do it justice. No, it don't. I mean, it was, and it was it was hot, and then you get there, and that mist off that waterfall is kind of, you know, cooling you off. It was neat. Well, uh, they changed the name of the courses on us, but that, they still kept the Sitka course. That was that one. Yeah, and then, different sponsors or whatever. Yeah, and then we shot the the Prime course, which I don't think it's called Prime anymore. I can't remember. I can't remember either. But the one where we shot the bedded buck off the blame rock, that big tall rock at like 48 yards, that was a cool shot. Yeah. I hope. And like – if you've never been and they got one near you, they got like five, four or five courses. Like they got it from super easy where you don't hardly walk at all to like going up the side of a mountain and everywhere in between. So mm-hmm. it's worth checking out or at least going and it watching is. or whatever. But I, I enjoyed it. They set up a little village of vendors. You know, you could buy probably what, 20, 30 little yeah. vendors there, you know, just random stuff. Mountain Ops uh, was there. Yeah. Some people making wrist slings were there. Different bow companies were there. Just all kinds of stuff. Then they had the, uh, I think the way they do it at each event, they do, it's like a hundred and something yard shot. I think they put, if you hit the 12 ring or whatever, they put everybody's name in a hat and then give away a truck at the the end end of the year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they do. I think it's a hundred. I think it's different for each one because I know one of them is roughly like 111, 112, but I think they do a, a caribou target. And you hit the 12, it's, I mean, you can shoot it as much as you want. I think it's like 10 bucks a pop to yeah. shoot it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at, at the end of the, at the last shoot, whoever won the truck the year before, they take everybody's name and put it in a little, almost kind of like on a little bag and they'll flip it over and they'll set a target i think this last time i think it was like a 8500 yard shot the guy shot who won the truck the previous year oh yeah and he hit the winner i think it was old chris b yeah it was it was but they got all kind of stuff and then like saturday night they got like a little country music concert Mm -hmm. it's neat like you can just stay there and have fun and then the r100 from reinhardt that's the shoot there's 100 targets but they got like elephants and zebras and freaking giraffes, giraffes, all yeah, kind going of. on a safari. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's neat. There's like a North American side and an African side. I mean, like bat targets hanging from trees and just all sorts of stuff. Yep. I mean, this a uh, it's 50 targets, but it's not really a long walk because you're just it's not far between each target, but it's 50 targets, so it ends up being a little bit. But yeah, I'd like we hadn't been there in a couple of years. I'd like to hit it if it comes back to Georgia. 
but anyway i'm looking forward to that Mm -hmm. and uh around here it's been getting cold and it went from i think for like in one week it went from like 70s to 20s at night it was crazy so i don't know i don't know but bobby i'm glad he's here with us the bow trader galore (laughs) it's good to be here we um you know it's learning strings bobby's been around archery for a long time but learning like the string process some people catch on like that and and bobby did and then we've had other people we've tried and they just couldn't figure they just i don't know what it is like just couldn't figure it out we've had a couple people like that Mm -hmm. but uh anyway it's a it's a process and i know y'all have seen it we've we've went live and done all this stuff while we've been back there making strings but it's just a big process and if you need a string go to archershackstrings.com and uh, use the code what is it podcast 15 yeah podcast 15 it'll get you 15 percent off um and we i mean we do regular compound strings crossbows ravens the whole nine yards so yep just uh let us know how we can help is somebody here yep okay well we'll get off here because we got a customer coming in but uh, we appreciate y'all listening yep we appreciate you bobby we Glad do to be here and i'm sure we'll have him on again soon but y'all be safe out there and we'll see you soon y'all have a good one have a good one see y'all